comic books made more sense. You know it is fictitious without pretense. Today I thought I'd take a look at my favorite childhood annual. Um, annuals, of course, come out around summertime or so. And um, it used to be that annuals would have a main story and then a whole bunch of fun little uh, features and things. Um, a nice fun grab bag, you know, a, a fun Sunday afternoon leafing through all this stuff. Um, nowadays, I find annuals are very lacking. Uh, but... Um, I remember reading this over and over again. I, I really love this one. This is Amazing Spider-Man um, Annual 23. Uh, this came out around the time of Atlantis Attacks. So Atlantis Attacks was a whole uh, crossover event that went through all of these Marvel annuals. Um, here, of course, um, Spider-Man fights Abomination alongside She-Hulk. And um, the pencils were done by Rob Liefeld for this, uh, um, this main story here. Uh, plus, The Origin of the Amazing Spider-Man. Um, it's a retelling. How Spidey's spider sense works. That's pretty cool. And uh, Aunt May in action. Aunt May has her own little story here as well. Uh, on the back is uh, Schwinn. So this was 1989. Um, and they had these bicycle commercials on the backs of like most of the Marvel comics at the time. So it's still 80s. It's just the tail end of the 80s. Uh, Batman, of course, is running roughshod over the um, box office at this time. Um, but, you know, Marvel is still going strong. I was reading everything Spider-Man at this point. Um, I love Spider-Man. And uh, back then I read any any uh, Spider-Man title that came out. Uh, here's a Zit commercial. Uh, clear Cell, Double Clear. Uh, they had all sorts of different products back then. They knew their um, market. Now, 89, I was probably 12. Or so um so just uh getting into that uh whole market there <laughs> um here's the big table of contents in the story so far not much of a story for atlantis attacks basically it's not like namor attacking the earth or anything it's this guy uh gar who was a high priest um and um and i think he was a lemurian uh he um turns up a lot in the second Eternal series, the one that, you know, the, the Kirby-less um, Eternal series. The one that uh, introduces this idea that uh, the Eternals are automatons, basically, that you can, you know, like, uh, regenerate a new one, which was used in the movie. Um, that ran before all this. Uh, Gar also had cosmic powers and stuff. I like that character a lot. He's a really fearsome villain. Uh, they never do much with him now. Um, I think people just like, you know, a lot of people make fun of Atlantis attacks and everything. And um, no one likes that uh, that uh, second series of the uh, Turtles, right? So, um, so yeah, I, Abominations, my science project. That's the, um, the Jerry Conway retelling of the uh, origin story. Um, top 30 villain countdown. I love that one. Uh, Spidey versus JJJ, uh, which is um, just a retelling of the feud between Spidey and um, J. Jordan Jameson. Um, Spider-Man's uncanny spider sense. That's cool. Uh, just going through the, um, the the abilities of the spider sense itself. Um, standards of behavior and saga of the serpent crown, which ran throughout these. Uh, There's a backup tale that ran throughout these um these annuals during Atlantis attacks because um, it just goes through what the Serpent Crown is and that's what um, uh, Gar is after to resurrect Set. It's a whole thing. It's <laughs> and he, he's trying to collect brides as you'll see here for Set. This has seen better days. Uh, this is my childhood copy. Um, I'll never part with it because I, I, I love this comic. So here is... Um, what art would uh, be for the into the 90s, um, how style was uh, jettisoned in favor of all these squiggly lines and all this stuff um, purporting to be detailed and everything. This is Rob Liefeld. Um, it's scripted by David Michelini. Um, and it's inked by Dizon. I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, to be to be fair, um, they list the inkers uh, throughout the comic itself. Um but yeah, it's like uh, 20 to 24 is, um, well, one set of anchors, and then uh, pages 25 to 30 is another set of anchors. Um, 
Right, so Michelini was um, heavily involved with Spider-Man at this time. I love his era. Um, I was a big fan of Spider-Man at this time. We'll get into it when we get into the villains and everything. Um, that, that top, that top uh, I think it's 20 or 30 uh, villain countdown. Um, so here's Gar uh, working on the, the, this, this big version of the um, Serpent Crown to resurrect Set. And someone um, drops a piece or something like that. So Gar uses his powers to kill that dude. He's my brain burning, and he he, he falls. And then uh, Lyra turns up on a view screen and says, uh, "Ever the disciplinarian, right?" Um, so uh, they're heading to New York, and he's like, "Yes, yes, yes." And he's like, "Hail set," you know, the big like smiley face here. Here's Spider Man, and um, as you can see, there's feet. So, <laughs> um, uh, Liefeld didn't shy away from that. Um, so, uh, Spider-Man's doing his thing. And now this is the very, um, Todd McFarlane, uh, looking, uh, webs here. Um, McFarlane sort of revolutionized the look of Spider-Man. Um, and I know old timers don't, don't like that, but I mean, he, he does look more acrobatic and arachnid sort of, um, and um and the webbing looked uh interesting you know it's like twirly sort of like webs rather than just a line bubble bobble for nes i love that game um i had a, a sleepover party one time and and we finished it um and then we watched horror movies and stuff like that it was like a like 10 or 11 year old birthday party or something um and the bubble bobble i think it had 100 stages um and I, I, we, we played through it and we finished it. It was pretty awesome. And they had credits and stuff. And the credits were useless because like um, everyone had nicknames. So it's like, who are these people? Um, I think this is on the NES Classic, and and uh, I own that, so I, I play it every so often. Um, but it's, uh, I, I love this game. And that that song, if you play the uh, game through and finish it, that song is in your head for a month. It's crazy. Dun 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 dun. dun you know what I'm talking about. So, uh, here is the Daily Bugle, um, uh, Mary Jane, uh, come, comes through and, 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 um, and surprises, uh, Peter Parker, um, she was heavily sexed up in these days, um, the, the, the young men drawing her were, you know, like, they were young men and they were, um, really, um, fetishizing her a lot, um, as you can see, there's like big, big late 80s hair here. You'll see that a lot, especially with She-Hulk. She-Hulk's mad uh, because um, there's a homeless problem in, in uh, New York City um, at this time. And J. Jordan Jameson um, published a, a whole editorial uh, saying they should ship them all to Jersey. And <laughs> she, she went there to um, demand an apology. He didn't apologize. Um, she's like, who's going to apologize for you? I like She-Hulk. Um, I know now that the, the the story, the narrative around her is she was never good in the comics. I liked her in... I, I read She-Hulk mostly in other comics. You know, like guest spots like this or Avengers or Fantastic Four when she was a part of that. Um, and I liked her. I mean, she's got principles here and she's standing up for them and stuff. And she's not, you know, abusing her powers here. She's just going there as an attorney and and demanding an apology for that that terrible um editorial right um so you know parker and um mary jane are having lunch and parker's a uh, um spider sense goes off he's like it's just a truck well he should know there's gotta be something in that truck and there is it's abomination with lyra with her with her incredible outfit and what they're going to do is they're going to try to um, transfer uh, whoever is in this. I don't know who's in the Abomination body at this point, but transfer it back to Emo Blonsky. And um, and he's like, I'm going to be human again. It's going to be great. So um, so they do the transfer and power goes out everywhere and it tips off Spider-Man and She-Hulk, right? So they both like you know leave their what what they're doing and then turn into their superhero personas. Um, and I like the little backpack here for uh, <laughs> Spider Man. That should be a, a uh, like an add on to uh, action figures. You know, snap it onto the back. Um, but that's where his clothes is and everything. But when they did this transfer, something went wrong, and now 
uh, Abomination is a mindless beast and there is no Emo Blonsky anymore. Of course, that can be retconned later, but um, so now you're dealing with a truly mindless Abomination beast, right? So he smashes through and I love the look of all of this. Um, I know people will criticize Liefeld, but um, it is awesome. It's very dynamic. Um, you know, and, and, and the paneling here is, is really neat. It's not the, not the, um, the two by six, right? Um, it, it's, it's pretty neat. It, it, it brings you into the action. Um, I love this little shot here and yes, you got the cleavage and everything like that. Um, th that would, um, be, uh, accentuated and, um, and uh, exaggerated more and more and more with each uh, female hero in the 90s, as you know. I mean, <laughs> you know, it just got um, stupid and crazy. I mean, and, you know, like, as a young man, I was like, okay, enough, right? Like, you know, why can't you draw normal-looking women, right? Um, so Abomination throws a big thing and that, that um, She-Hulk smashes. It's pretty cool. Uh, pretty good storytelling here. Um and then this, this chopper is like a, you know, it's a news chopper. He's like, oh, what about the bystanders? Like, they didn't even notice that bystanders. So he's going to go get a kid. Uh, she's going to go get other people. And um, and so they, they brought him out of the way, but Abomination's got his um, eyes set on someone else. Uh, meanwhile, Gar notices um, She-Hulk. He's uh, impressed by her and wants to mark her as a, a bride for set. So, um, now this, I, I didn't like these poses where Liefeld would draw, um, uh, <laughs> Abomination with his back to everyone and his butt sticking out and turning around. It looks, it looks like a cheesecake pose. It looks really weird, like a baby or something. Uh, so he brings down a, um, a, a wall onto Spider-Man. Meanwhile, um, um, uh, Aunt May is, uh, Worried because she's listening to all this on the news. She's like, oh, I think Peter Parker's there. Um, and here's Flash Thompson. And he sees Abomination. Abomination leaps away. She-Hulk had um, protected Spider-Man through the uh, wall and jumps off. And here's a little quiet moment with Wilson Fisk. Um... I don't like when he's drawn exaggerated like this. It's just, it's kind of dumb. It's like, I get it's a comic and you could do all that, but like, um, you know, I, I get that he's a big, um, like tubby looking dude. Then just draw that. Don't draw like a big cartoonish, like football, right? Um, anyhow, uh, so abomination is killing people and that this is sort of heartbreaking where, he's, where it says um he does his best to create more memories so he's like just beating people's heads and stuff crushing this guy um and then she hulks like leave him alone so he's like fighting all these cops right and then spider-man comes to little flashes around him and uh he takes off and so she hulks holding her own against uh abomination but then gets slammed. And and that's a pretty good shot too. Uh, nice uh nice layout there. And so um while she's out, Gar comes in this little floating bathtub thing and, and uh puts the mark of set on her uh to mark her as a, a bride of set. And so Spider Man comes, she hulk recovers, and they both try to fight um Abomination together. And it's pretty cool. Like this is what Marvel Comics was to me. Um, just, uh, good guys fighting bad guys, like, uh, some altercation happens, and then there's all sorts of great, like, um, gags and nuances and fun stuff within the fight. Um, you know, anything that Spider-Man climbs up, uh, Abomination has to tumble down with his, with his power. And, um, She-Hulk has, like, a big gas tanker. And there's another cheesecake pose of the, the butt sticking out. It, it's kind of stupid looking, but... Um, they set Abomination on fire, and he uh, falls into um, a nearby boat. Everyone um, dives off the boat before it explodes. And that's kind of the end of Abomination here. Um, and Spidey's like, you okay? It's like, sure, as a lawyer, I've counseled better wives um, who were worse off than this. And he's like, you? No, I'll live, but I don't know what happened here, you know, and, and, and he's, he's like, what's on your throat? And she's like, oh, it's probably just a bruise or whatever. 
and I liked their friendship. Um, every so often, they, they'd uh, they'd meet up with each other in Marvel Comics, and they're buddies, you know. And I like that. Um, I like the one. I like the Avengers issue, and I can't remember which one it was. Where She Hulk shares to Spider Man what her salary is at the Avengers, so Spider Man tries to like become an Avenger. <laughs> um, that was fun. So, um, so here the uh, the um, Atlantis people are are recruiting more guys etc and then it continues into punisher annual 2 which i think had um moon knight in it um if i'm not mistaken so that's the main story um here is my science project which is basically a retelling um of the origin story by jerry conway uh with pencils by mark bakley and ink by um, mike esposito so this is a, a 90s version because the original uh, one was written in the '60s, and it has uh, it has references to like Khrushchev and stuff. So, <laughs> you know, and and like big man on campus, which is an old time term. So, um, so here it is in the '90s, Flash and 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 um, everyone else. Um, they still call him a, a wallflower, which I don't even know if people still use that term anymore. Um, so you can, you can't you know win with the girls and everything. Liz Liz Allen here. Um, here's uh, Uncle Ben and Aunt May, um, wheat cakes, you know, he's eating his wheat cakes here, goes to a science experiment, this happens with the spider, uh, getting irradiated, bites him, um, then he jumps out of the way of a car, like, squeezes a, a lead pipe, so he's like, oh, you know, I've got all these powers, so it's, it's super quick, then he's like, let me make some money off of it, wrestling, uh, here's Operation Wolf. This was awesome. That, I think that's the, the top-down one with the Jeep that you you drive around shooting guys or whatever. Um, potato stuff was great. Uh, and, yeah, I, I loved Operation Wolf. Um, it was great with a joystick. Uh, but, yeah, NES was in full swing at this time. Uh, it was the, 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 the big thing. Um, you know, of course, it, it competed against Genesis around this time, but I was more of an NES guy. So he fights uh, wrestlers and stuff, and they're going to make him a big star. They give him a big payday. He comes up with these web shooters and everything and, and the costume. Um, and he becomes a big TV star. He's doing all sorts of stuff. He's, he's, he's uh, lifting pianos and all that stuff. Um, then a robber uh, gets away from a cop. Spider-Man doesn't try to stop him. You know the story, right? Um <laughs> Yeah, Uncle Ben's a big part of Spider-Man. I think it's a big mistake to, to leave him out. It's ridiculous to me. Because that is the story, right? Um, anyhow, uh, he comes a star still. He comes home. Um, cops are there. They tell him that Uncle Ben was uh, murdered by uh, like a, a robber, a burglar, um, who, sur who was surprised by Uncle Ben. So he goes and catches the guy and it's it's it's... The guy that he um, that he uh, didn't catch before. So there you go. And then with great power comes great responsibility and all that stuff. Um, and I learned life's lessons cost more than a broken uh, test tube. Sure. Um, and here's the with great power comes great responsibility. There's a lot of uh, ink smudging here. That's from the comic itself. It's probably from years of wear. Um, because I read this a lot. So... You'll see that a lot throughout. So here's Spider-Man's um, uh, Spider-Sense. So he talks about it a lot here. Um, yeah, he, he can see around... Well, not see, but he could sense around walls and stuff like that. Someone walks by, he can sense that there, there's something wrong with them. Um, and he even works on, on uh, Aunt May. <laughs> um, and he can do things um, blindfolded, which uh, they don't really do much with him. Um, you could uh, sense in the dark, uh, figure out if someone's going to spy on him, um, and reveal his secret identity. I love this panel here. Does it say, does it have, uh, credits here? No. But, um, I love this, and, like, as you can see, it, it, this is more of the house style of Spider-Man. Um, none of the squiggling line, you know, 90s stuff, right? I love this panel as well when when uh, Spider Man's trying to um defuse a bomb and like uh Dr. Octopus is, is right behind him. 
And here's more NES stuff. Uh, this is a Sears catalog. Um, early, early sort of uh, drawings of uh, King Koopa and his troopas. Um, they look weird here. They look like like ducks or something like that with shells. Um, and King Koopa looks kind of weird here too. But like Mario looks like Mario. Um, I drew this a lot. Uh, and I think a lot of kids did too, you know, with the, the, you start with the nose and the mustache coming out and then the rest of the face and the hat and everything. Um, they make a mistake here. And was, this always drove me nuts when I saw this. Um, this looks more like uh, Zelda 2 and this looks more like Simon's Quest. But they say Zelda 2, it's Simon's Quest. And this is uh, Simon's Quest, but it should be um, Zelda. It is Zelda 2 here, but it should be Simon's Quest. Uh, Blades of Steel. People don't talk about anymore. I had the NES action set that had the, um, the Mario and Duck Hunt and the the gun here. Um, so this is like a, I guess this is like a, a phone in catalog thing, um, which I never I never bought into. Um, and these are all the usual suspects of of uh, video games, like Spy Hunter and uh, uh, Tecmo Bowl and. Um, Cuber and all that stuff, Rad Racer. Um, so yeah, this uh, NES was in full swing. So here's um, Aunt May and her own little adventure. And this is Nick Katzenberg, and he um, is a rival of Peter Parker's at um, the Daily Bugle. He's a character that you don't really see much anymore. Uh, back then, he was a real like slime ball. Um, and here he's invading um, Parker's uh, privacy by. Um, um, pretending to be nice and and uh, taking pictures and stuff around uh, Aunt May's house. So Aunt May slowly suspects that there's something wrong with this guy. Um, Spider-Man comes and says, like, you know, uh, oh my gosh, like Nick Katzenberg is here. That that's that's not good, right? Um, and it's like Mr. Katzenberg, I assure you, my uh, Peter does not indulge in hard liquor. Like I guess he's accusing. Him and he's like, okay, okay, I hear you. The kid's a saint. Um, what precisely is that? Uh, what was he say? Uh, don't get a, a hair up your nose uh, for the love of Mike. <laughs> so he's he's being a slime ball anyways, and he's just snooping around Peter Parker's area trying to find something on him. Um, yeah. So, anyways, uh, she finally realizes that he's a douchebag. And, um, and he's like, I'll bet you have a sweet old, uh, dame, I, I bet, oh, a sweet old dame like you, um, bet you read all about the tabloids, um, ever see the National Examiner? And she's like, I thought, so Mr. Katzenberg, I, I'd like you to leave. Um, so he's with, like, the Examiner, and, um, and she's like, uh, uh, you as much as, as call my nephew a drunkard, um, Mr. Katzenberg, uh, as for the rest... Um, if you don't know, uh, there's really no point in my telling you, is there? Um, because he asked, like, you know, what did I say? Uh, but he's just a, like a slime ball. So she shoes him out and Spider-Man's like, huh, and then, you know, she took care of the, the situation. Um, so he comes home and he knows full well what just happened, but, uh, he can't let on. And, um, Aunt May is like, uh, you know, like, uh, Peter Parker says, I think they're, they're trash on me. Um, so do I, so the market tabloids. Um, and she's like, they're rude and obnoxious and everything. And, um, and then she talks about upholding the, the standards of behavior, etc. Um, it's a cute little story, um, where she tangles with Nick Katzenberg. As I say, Nick Katzenberg is not a character that people probably know now. Um, I remember him from back in this era, um, and he could be a, cr a cool little um, um, addition to the movies. The only thing is there's no Daily Bugle <laughs> in these movies. So, oh well. Um, here's the... Uh, it's some sort of telephone adventure game. I never bought into that as a kid. I, I like this this uh, sort of illustrative art. Uh, it's probably traced over like a, a picture or something like that um, of Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford. Um I guess you phoned and then you'd have to press buttons to do something in the game or something like that. Choose from six games. Uh, I don't know. Um, here's comic book conventions in the States. Um, 
New York, New Jersey, um, etc. So here's the Spider-Man Top 30 Villain Countdown. Now, a lot of these villains, uh, some of them aren't really used much anymore, but a lot of them are familiar to me from this era, and even though some people might view characters like Molten Man or Hydro Man as like D-list or, or, or Z-list characters, um, they're pretty um, prominent to me. I, I consider them right up there with the classics like Electro and Lizard and stuff. So, at 30, um, Spider-Man does rank... Uh, oh, I should say, um, all these characters are drawn in the What The design. What The was um, a spoof comic Marvel put out, um, which was jokey and funny, and had the characters look cartoony like this. So, um, Red Skull. Uh, that's a... That's a um, I mean, it's Red Skull. And, like, there, there were some plots, like, uh, I think it was... a. Um, the assassination plot or something like that was the big crossover where Spider-Man had to tangle with them. Uh, so he's here in, in number 30. Uh, Crime Master. Um, this is a character I don't think they really use much anymore. Um, I don't remember him recently in that whole, um, that whole Tombstone story. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm misremembering, but, um, so yeah, uh, Sin Eater that people don't really talk about any anymore either. Um, Hammerhead, uh, not to be confused with Flat Top from Dick Tracy. I, he's exactly Flat Top. It's, it's funny. Uh, he turned up a lot in the comics, and I always thought, like, oh, if they make a movie, they, he'd be in there. Uh, but, you know, no one knows who this character is anymore. Um, Ch uh, Chameleon, which I'm pretty sure is the first villain Spider-Man ever fought in Amazing Spider-Man. If you don't count like the burglar who who's not a a super villain, Hydro Man, uh, they don't use him a lot anymore. Um, he's pretty awesome. He's like uh, totally made of water. And and um, when they made Darkwing Duck around this time, uh, they had a character called Liquidator, which I always thought was based on this guy. Um, and Shocker, uh, I always thought Shocker was a pretty cool villain. He didn't have to be like um a, a D list or Z list guy. Um, you know, he, he's pretty formidable. He could shake down buildings. So, I mean, he could be a great villain for Spider-Man. Uh, they don't really use him that much anymore. Uh, Molten Man's another dude they don't use much anymore. He's, um, all heat and fire. Um, Silvermane, uh, you know, here was used a lot in the cartoon. Um, different iterations. Not necessarily this iteration. Um, I always laughed at this where he's, uh, he's talking about how, um, a frail 80-year-old uh, seeking the Fountain of Youth. Uh, he found it in a cyborg body. I ask you, is this progress? And he looks like a big mess, right? Um, Juggernaut um, famously fought Spider-Man in a two-parter in Amazing Spider-Man. Um, I have it. I think everyone has it. I mean, it's it's pretty cool. Um, one thing about the art style here, everyone has knees with like a little coil around their knees. Uh, even uh, Silvermane. Um... And here's the human fly who looks a lot like the Archie character, um, the fly. Um, human fly was another character that was a real life person dressed as a human fly. They made a Marvel comic on, uh, this is another human fly probably to retain that copyright. Um, like the, uh, the name Carrion was a fairly prominent, um, villain in this era. Um, another great villain in Spider-Man's, uh, rogues gallery that, you don't really see much anymore. Anything he touches dies. Jackal um, would turn up later and become more prominent with the whole um, clone saga. You know, but right now uh, he's uh, ranked at 18. Um, Tarantula, I always love the look of him. Not necessarily here, but when he's drawn normal. Um, Rhino is a classic Spider-Man villain. Puma. Um, in this era, had a whole storyline with Spider-Man where um, um, he he's a CEO of a major like corporation, but also um, he owed Spider-Man a debt, and so he had to he had to pay it and all that. Um, it's a whole thing. Uh, I remember him being fairly prominent in Spider-Man comics in this time. Um, you don't really see much of him anymore. Uh, the Lizard, of course, classic Spider-Man villain. Uh, Electro, classic Spider-Man villain. 
uh, Mysterio, Sandman, Classics. So now we're getting into the top 10. So J. Jonah Jameson, of course. Because um, he's always hounding Spider-Man. But you know, he, he makes a lot of villains too. And it's funny, like he never gets in trouble for that. <laughs> um, the burglar that killed uh, um, Uncle Ben, of course. Uh, Venom. Uh, looking all cartoony here, but of course Venom was fairly prominent in this time. Um, arguably the, the most popular villain in this era uh, for Spider-Man. Uh, Scorpion, of course. Um, ranked fairly high here, and a lot of people would probably see him as a Z-list villain, but like he's a classic villain. He was even in the old um, uh, 60s cartoon series. Uh, Vulture, classic Spider-Man villain. Doctor Doom. Um... Fought Spider-Man every so often in the comics. Uh, was fairly prominent in the 80s solo mo uh, solo TV series. Uh, sorry, not TV series. Like the the solo cartoon series. Um, that ran concurrent with the Spider-Man and his amazing friends. And would sometimes use the same plot lines. Um, Doctor Doom was all, all throughout that series. Uh, Wilson Fisk, of course. Um, started as a Spider-Man villain. Became a... Daredevil villain, but fought Spider-Man as well. Uh, Craven the Hunter, of course, with his classic storyline, um, Last Hunt. Doctor Octopus. And then, um, I think these two are ranked as number one. So it's Hobgoblin and Green Goblin. Um, who were fairly prominent in these comics of the time. Um, I would say that they, they rose um, Doctor Octopus to prominence with um, and I think it's after this uh, annual with the um, Return of the Sinister Six and all that stuff. So that's the top 30, guys. Um, some pretty cool stuff. Some forgotten villains here that I'd like to see come back. Here's a, a retelling of the whole um, feud between Spider-Man and J. Jonah Jameson done in that what the style. Um, and they recount this from an early issue of Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man, uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 10, where um, he's jealous of Spider-Man. Um, I can never respect myself while he lives. It's a whole monologue he has with himself in that issue. And all the different um, things that he's done. He's created all these robots with like um, a screen for a head with, the, with, with his face on it. Um, all sorts of different robots here. <laughs> um... Of course, he had a hand in um, Scorpion, um, the human fly. Uh, his son was Man-Wolf. Um, and even though he hates Spider-Man, he still pays uh, Peter Parker. Here they show the dollar amount. It's $500, I guess, for like that job. And running through the backs of all of the annuals at this time um, for the Atlantis Attacks event was also um, an ongoing um, explanation of the saga of the Serpent Crown. Um, so here it's just there's more shenanigans and stuff, how the crown was handed um, from people to people uh, back in prehistoric days. Um, some of these um, have uh, stories from, like, that involve Conan the Barbarian, because Conan was pretty prominent in Marvel Comics at the time. Um, and because of that, whenever some of these Serpent Crown stories are reprinted in the um, omnibuses and stuff that, that um, collect all the Atlantis Attacks annuals, um, they, just, they just have a little description. They can't, like, reprint all of this stuff. So here you go. Here's Stan's Soapbox, um, talking about how important comics are. Uh... Just trying to read these items quickly to see if there's anything, like, important. And usually they had a profile here and a quote here. They, they were doing that a bit in the late 80s. And here's some Eternals and everything. So there you have it. Continued in Punisher Annual 2, of course. Here's Nintendo Serial. Nintendo, you know, as I said before, like, super-duper popular. So Nintendo Serial... Um, yeah, it's put out by Ralston. Um, they were still making cereals under that name at this time. Um, this was done like in the Wonka Nerds uh, sort of style where um, Nerds was a candy where they still have them. 
a box with one side has one flavor, another side ha had the other flavor. So here is like Super Mario Brothers cereal on one side, Zelda cereal on the other side. I guess there's like two bags in there. Um, we rescued breakfast. This tastes super. So Mario has usually been fairly on model for a good like almost 40 years now. Um, he looked a little different in like the Donkey Kong cartoon in 1982-83 around there. But then once um, Mario Brothers and then Super Mario Brothers uh, became popular, he sort of stayed fairly on model on point. Uh, so Mario is fruity, Zelda is berry. I don't know what the difference is, but <laughs> hey. Um, and here's a Schwinn bicycle commercial. Dun, with this like naked dude holding a bicycle over his head. Um, and there you have it. This is my favorite uh, annual. Um, there, I own many annuals. I, I, I love uh, comic book annuals, but this is the one I read over and over again, probably because of the um, the top 30 villain countdown. That's that's a lot of fun. Um, and it's a great grounder. If you, if you didn't know much about Spider-Man, you just read this. Um, it has the origin. It has like a, um, a whole uh, run through of his, his spider sense. His villains, it's great. It's a great, like, you know, like a um, uh, grounding issue for Spider-Man. So I hope you like looking through this with me. Um, Amazing Spider-Man Annual 23 from 1989. Take care.